Hey everybody, Coach Troy here. Now, not too long ago, we've got a firmware update for the uh, GameStation Pro by my arcade. Uh, now, this did come out not too long ago, so it was pretty nice how they immediately figured out what some of the problems were, and they went ahead and gave us a fix for them. Now, what exactly does this update involve? Uh, well, it sounds like it's going to be a little easier to navigate the main menu. There's also going to be some instructions added to the... Uh, the games there. So when you select a game, there's going to be a few more instructions on, on how the game is played, which is nice, something I was really upset that we didn't have before. The aspect ratio on some of the arcade games, like the, I noticed that uh, Centipede was um, pretty wide, and so all the pixels were much, much bigger and fatter than they should be looking. It actually kind of looked like, uh, just like the 7800 version almost. And lastly, they are going to do something to make it so that your uh, SD card reader is going to be a lot easier to sort out when you're going through your ROMs. That's something I'm excited for. So what all are you going to need to update uh, your GameStation Pro? Well, first off, you're going to need a computer. That is a must. You're going to need to have a little wire here. Um, there, I know there's certain tools, but really all you need is a little wire, just so you can hit that reset button on the back of this. And lastly, you will need a cord that's going to be able to, a USB-C to hook up your uh, GameStation Pro to your computer. The uh, power cord that came with your GameStation Pro is not going to cut it because that only does power. You're going to need one that does power as well as information like a, like a phone hookup or phone connection. Now on the website, uh, they have a really nice uh, instructions as well as a video. Uh, so you can look on there and figure out how to do it. I'm not going to show you. It's already right there. They've got it done better than I could ever do it uh, instruction-wise. So go hit them up if you want to do it. And um, I already did mine, so let's go take a look at what exactly is different. And before we head over there and check it out, if you're enjoying this video, you find it useful or whatever, um, if you want to hit a like or subscribe, just lets me know I'm doing the right thing on the right track and, and uh, helping people out. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go. All right, so looking at it, uh, looks a little different. The Atari games spot looks uh, slightly different. Let's head over to settings. So we got different there. Aspect ratio is the same. The art's the same. Scan lines, control of view. Now there's an FAQ. So you got like four questions on there. Uh, kind of help people out if they're struggling with that. And then the about. So FAQ was different in there. Otherwise, let's sit on the Atari games. And now this is something that I can't really show, but moving through here, like navigating, is just so much easier. Like last time, I, I didn't mention it, but I kind of felt like I was bouncing around too much. And uh, I don't know, this is just much, much easier to navigate. And then when you click on a game, like Desert Falcon here, if you look on the right, it will have controller instructions. So, no, it's not the full manual, but you can at least get an idea of how you're supposed to play some of the games. Now to take a look at the improvements in our arcade games, here is Centipede. So yeah, the sides are much, much skinnier and you get that long view. This is how it looked in the arcades. The sprites are not all ridiculously bloated looking. Uh, it looks much cleaner, much more accurate. Annoying spider and all. And then, I bounce, got out of here, get out of here. I can get to my, bam, I can get to my games list. All right, these are all the games that I have uh, ROMs of. And now it's no longer just a list of games like it was previously. Now you can actually make folders and have the different game systems in here, which is pretty neat. Um, this is not all of them. There are more. I've, I've been testing things out like the links here. I can't get anything to work for that. So any 2,600 games that you want on here. Yes, I know. I just got Smurfs. Don't judge me. Um, but other 7800 games, like I really wanted to play Commando, I was a little upset that wasn't on there. And of course everyone's favorite, Ninja Golf. That is such a strange game. 
Just wondering what they were thinking when they made this. Another cool thing about this now is if you want to use the paddle controller, which is probably the one of the really standout things about this base uh, system here, is you can make a folder, Atari 2600 paddle, and the games you put in there, you're going to be able to use your paddle with. Alright, let's check out this strange one here. That's a very different game here, but I can use my paddle. And real cool thing is, I can hit this button. I can use the game difficulty switches, and I can do the paddle sensitivity now, which is great. So it's a little too flying all over the place. Boom! I'll put that on low. Get back in the game here. Now I feel like I got a little more control over my paddle. And now I'm able to hit that stupid cobra. Ah. Now everybody loves Kaboom. And now we're able to play it. And lastly, if you look in there, we can now do SNES games. So as of right now, you only got a three button controller, right? So I gotta pick a game where you can put it on to three different buttons. This one is nice, so I can just make it, uh, make the buttons when I want them to be, and and now it's playable. It definitely feels more arcadey playing a game like this with a uh, with a joystick. Come on, jump up. There we go. Yeah, the controls are still a little bit iffy. The joystick is good, and this A button is perfect, but the B and C buttons, for some reason, they just don't always want to work quite right. And again, I don't know if that is the system's fault, or the ROM's fault, or or what it is, but it is an issue that I've been having a lot with different games. But the other problem with the SNES, though, if you've got games that use those other buttons... I only got three here, so I can jump, and I can... Uh, I can grab things with Yoshi, but I have no spin. There's no way to do a spin here. And there's no save states. So in a bigger game like this, when you're going to want to save your progress, you're not going to be able to beat it in just one sitting. It's just not, you know, uh, not possible yet. Hopefully they can work on something like that, but as of right now, no save states for these ROM games. All right, so I'm gonna say that is a definite improvement. Uh, I do like that they added the instructions for the games. Like, that's, that's uh, nice. It's not the full instructions, so I'm still a little disappointed in that. I feel that they, they could have added way more in there to explain how the games are played, but at least the control instructions are there, and that is, um, that is a nice thing to add. It's a, it's a big improvement. It's not just a picture of the controllers like they had before. There's actual details in there. So, very nice there. Fixing the arcade games is cool, though if you're into those, I'm not too excited about the arcade games, so that wasn't too big of a deal for me. But the fact that they do look like they're supposed to, that is, uh, that's nice. One of the things that I'm really happy about, I didn't even realize, but you can navigate that menu so much easier than uh, you could before. It's something that you can't really uh, show. It's just more on how it feels when you're doing it. It's just huge improvement, big improvement. It's something that seems so small and so subtle, but they did a great job in making sure that you can now navigate that much, much better. So big ups for that one. Seems little, but I'm going to say it's, it's kind of a, it's a, one of the bigger deals. And how nice is it to be able to, add, to to list your games out better, to add files so you can sort through, and it's just so much nicer. You don't have to go through all these extra steps to name your files, maybe put their system on beforehand so that it's easier to find the games you're looking for. Adding those folders makes a world of difference and um, just really, really steps up what this thing is, can do and how much nicer it is. So. It's so great to see that they're adding more value to this thing. Even though they sold a bunch, I'm sure they sold a decent amount, but the fact that they keep adding value and are supporting it, I am a 
big fan of that. That is fantastic. Thank you very much, My Arcade. Please keep it coming. Uh, it is nice to be able to play some of these other machines on there, like the Super Nintendo and whatnot. But yeah, the only big problem there is the control and the joystick. I don't know, it just it doesn't quite cut it. Um, but then again, that's another thing that there is a fix for, and I'm going to go over that in one of my next videos. So again, thank you, My Arcade, for, for updating. Keep those firmware updates coming, and I'll plug them in. Anyway, this is Coach Troy. I hope this is useful. I'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for joining me as I start my journey into the world of retro gaming. If you're interested in my other hobbies of fitness or board games, check out my other channel. Anyways, this is Coach Troy. I'll see y'all next time.